What is Pioneer Missions and why is it important? Today, I talk with Michael Bowman about his mission training school known as Mission 111. We discuss how to prepare adventurous missionaries to go to the hardest to reach parts of the world. We're not talking about going to five-star hotels. No, we're talking about hardcore missions where you sleep under the stars and eat bugs. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast with Dr. Daniel King, where Daniel interviews full-time evangelists, pastors, missionaries, and normal everyday Christians to discover how they share their faith, their powerful testimonies, and amazing stories that will inspire you to reach people with the good news. And now, here's your host, missionary and evangelist, Daniel King. Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King, and I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. Today, I have a very special guest, Michael Bowman. Thank you for being on the Evangelism Podcast with me. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to be here together with you. We have known each other for many years because you knew my wife. You used to work for Pastor Peter Youngren, evangelist from Canada, and you helped organize crusades for him in many different countries. Tell me about what you learned about doing campaigns, working with Pastor Peter Youngren. I would say what I learned the most is that we, um, we learned to do what was impossible time after time. And, um, you know, doing the impossible uh, time after time, you know, place after place, going to many of the difficult places, um, created a, a, a sense of nothing is impossible. That's what I really brought with me, number one, working with, with Pastor Peter. What were some of the countries that you worked with back at that time? I mean, we worked a lot in India, worked in uh, Pakistan, really difficult at that time. We were in some really difficult parts of Pakistan, um, Indonesia, you know, uh, Tanzania, of course, a little, little bit easier, uh, Zanzibar, difficult, uh, Congo, uh, both the Congos we were into, and uh, we did some other parts that was, you know, challenging. In Ethiopia, of course, also. A lot in Ethiopia. Yeah. And, and so now you have a tremendous focus on pioneer missions. Mm-hmm. Could you tell me what is pioneer missions? Well, pioneer missions for me uh, is to go to those places, those people groups, language groups, tribes that are the least reached. Uh, those that have never had the opportunity to hear about Jesus, um, we're really targeting towards those that are called, they're called unengaged. They have never heard about Jesus Christ since the death and resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. And uh, there are no Bible translations going on. There are no, no missionaries going there. Uh, and, uh, you know, basically, they're, they're untouched with the gospel. So that, that's our, 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 our aim and our focus. But of course, we also preach to people that are unreached. They might belong to people group. There are believers there, but the church is very weak and um, very few believers. So that's especially on our hearts to do something for them. I think this is such an important focus for the body of Christ to have because in my town, Tulsa, Oklahoma, there's literally a church on almost every corner. Yeah. I mean, they joke around and say that if you drop a, dra- drop a, a tract on the ground, a church will spring up. It's so fertile. Wow. But when you go to some places, there's, there's no churches, there's no Christians, and it takes a real special kind of anointing, calling from God to go to those places. How do you train people to go to pioneer areas and really pioneer something for Jesus? Mm. It's really not that complicated, I would say. Uh, I, I don't think we should make it more complicated than, there is, than it is, actually. But um, it's challenging, but we, we, we work with something called Mission 111. It's uh, like a very intense, high-impact training. Actually, they, they go through eight weeks of boot camp where we, where we give them some, some basic, basic teaching on you know, how do you preach and teach the gospel. Uh, we, we give them a tool called storytelling. Basically, we were entering into places where they have no idea about what is the Bible, 
you know, who is Jesus? Who created the heaven and the earth? So we start from the beginning, you know, in the beginning there was God and God created and, you know, so on and so forth. And we work through the Old Testament and into the New Testament, you know, to get, to lay a foundation. Why did Jesus have to come? Uh, so um, we work with that for, for eight weeks. We do, um, you know, cross-culture training. We do physical training, CrossFit, twice, twice a week to build up the physique because some, we go to some rough places. Uh, so with, after eight weeks, we ship them out and they're out in an unreached people group um, for about six weeks uh, in total, if you say, from the leave and, and then they're back. And then we do the briefing afterwards. And after the, the, this time, we, we put them through something, uh, we, we give them the opportunity to go to something called the next step. So they can be a part of, you know, continue in their missions calling. So, so really the, the first part is it's not so complicated. It's just about, you know, doing it. Uh, and so it works pretty good. So Mission 111, you're uh, in Sweden, mm -hmm. but there's also branches of Mission, yes. Mission 111 in Canada mm -hmm. and in the United States. Yes. And so the purpose is to raise up people who have a passion for reaching mm -hmm. the unreached. Um, talk to me a little bit more about storytelling, mm -hmm. what that looks like. Uh, how would someone tell the story of the gospel if they were in a culture that didn't know anything about Jesus? I would say that's the power of storytelling. Actually, storytelling has two parts that are really important. It, it's number one, the, the, the tool of, of, of telling oral stories about, you know, the creation, you know, how was the world created? You know, the, 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 the fall of man, sin came into the world and destroyed the world. So we, we work through that and we talk about the prophecies about him that would come. Um, and, and uh, you know, laying a foundation. So when we come into, you know, John the Baptist and, and talking about Jesus coming, they, they all see how, how chronologically it fits together. Because if you, if you enter into a people group that have no previous understanding and knowledge of the Bible, you know, knowledge about uh, the living God and knowledge about, you know, who is Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's, it's trying to contextualize it in such a way, you know, based on the chronological stories of the Bible. So they will, they will gain knowledge and revelation from that, from, you know, the Bible scriptures that the, the storytelling is, is based on. So it's, it's really giving them revelation. And of course, we believe the Holy Spirit is working through the, through the telling of the stories because it's basically the scripture that we're telling them um, and um, you know that helps them to to gain knowledge understanding and revelation about the ways of the living God you know how to why do I need to get saved you know what is salvation you know what what you know what is the new birth you know you know the baptism of the of the Holy Spirit you know all these important things that that we take for granted as Christians, uh, but they have no clue. So in a very short time of, of when they're out in the, in the, on the mission fields for these, you know, five weeks, you know, four or five weeks on site, they don't have much time. So it's a very condensed, but very efficient, high impact way of, of uh, you know, sharing the gospel. Uh, so it's um, because they have, have no previous understanding, you know, of the God of the Bible. What are some parts of the world that you would consider to be in need of pioneer missions? I mean, there are, there are a lot of, of places, but I, I would say for my, you know, this, our Swedish section, which is part of Mission 111, of course, Mission 111 was started by, uh, by Carl Hargestam and Jennifer Hargestam, uh, you know, uh, and a number of years ago, but uh, I'm I'm heading up the the Swedish part, and we have mm, our passion is the 1040 window, and we we try to to focus on that part specifically. And I would say, like the the Horn of Africa, you have um, a great need. You have uh, you know, of course, the Middle East, but I would say Southeast Asia, where you have the the, the a tremendous growth of. Um, you know, a population, but you also have a lot of people groups there. Um, you know, Pakistan, you have India, uh, China, of course, uh, Vietnam, Thailand, um, some of the places where people are actually traveling quite often from the Western world, but there are still people groups that are, you know, 
in, in areas of these nations where uh, they, they've been unreached by the gospel, uh, of the gospel, and, and where have been, you know, no missionaries going. So we, we're, um, we're operating with something. We have, we have an operation called Operation 326. We've done a research to see, you know, where are the remain, remaining uh, people groups that have never heard the gospel before? Uh, so we are actually sending out the expedition tree, uh, uh, teams, going out, putting boots on the ground to find out is the statistics that we, that we read in Joshua Project, finish the task, and so on. Is it accurate? Because we've learned something, and, and I know all these organizations, they do the best and they do a great job, but it's very difficult with the statistics. So the only way to figure find out how is the situation is you need to put boots on the ground. You need to, to meet people, you need to interview people, find out you know, what is going on. So our focus is um, this summer we've had two teams going in Southeast Asia, visiting six different unengaged people groups and we found out out of these six uh, there are two maybe uh, three of them that that are actually unengaged one was assimilated with another people group so they don't don't exist anymore two others have been reached but the statistic says they're unengaged not reached uh, ever so um, that's a bit of work to do and and uh, our passion is for uh, you know 1040 window especially Southeast Asia because um, that's where the, most of the people are so when you send out a team for Mission 111 in for an immersion six weeks, you're not going to five-star hotels. No. You're going out into primitive areas, and they'll actually go and live in a village? Yes. They'll, they'll move into a village and stay there in a tent, sleeping pad, sleeping bag. Um, very simple, rough. Um, it's not for everyone, I would say, uh, but we, we find there's a lot of, especially young people, that want to, um, they're not, I wouldn't say they're out after adventure, but it's like the, uh, they feel it's not fair. How can it be that we have heard the gospel being preached over and over again? We get servings of good gospel, good Bible teaching. Uh, we have prayer meetings. We have cell groups. We have midweek services. We have, uh, you know, youth services. We have mo morning service and Sunday evening service. And we have service and service and service, which is great. We have podcasts like, like this, uh, a lot of teaching. And, there, and then there are others who never had their first serving of the gospel. So we find that there is um, um, the younger generation, they feel that this is not fair. You know, uh, something has to be done. And, and uh, you know, some of them are really, they, they feel the calling and they feel the urgency that, you know, I want to be a part of doing something different. I want to be part of helping people that never heard the gospel before. Um, and uh, some, many of those that we that come to our schools, they have no prior experience at all on missions, none. So, so it's uh, uh, it's a challenge for them, but they're willing to pay the price. And uh, we're we're blessed to work with young and and also some middle aged people also coming. Tell me some testimonies. What results have you seen in your effort to to reach these pioneer mission areas? Well. Um, Let's say we have. Uh, I, I can I can take one from from Sri Lanka, which is really not an. Uh, most people wouldn't say Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is the most unreached place uh, uh, on the earth, but uh, as a nation, uh, but you have villages up in the uh, the mountainous areas. Uh, where they have very little contact with, with uh, the rest of the world. Of course, they, they have uh, television, they watch you know, via satellite and so on, but they have, otherwise they live in the village. Uh, they work on tea estates or uh, um, you know, they're, they're cut off from the rest of the world pretty much. So um, a couple of years ago, we sent a, a team with young people and, and a couple of leaders into a village where they have never had any encounter with white people before. Um, it's not that we are special, but the, no foreigners have been there. And no one had been there preaching to them. The only thing we came into, the only thing they had was a, they had a Hindu temple in the middle of the village. Um, you know, several hundred people living there. And never heard the gospel. And we, we started to, to share the stories with them and, uh, evening after evening and, you know, praying for people that were sick. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are sick and they got healed. They started to listen. People got saved. And from being nothing, not a single believer, all of a sudden we had a group of believers, 
you know, in a, in, in a few weeks, uh, if, if uh, these young people would have gone there, these people in the village would never heard the gospel. They've never been saved without them. So with simple means, ordinary young people can make a difference. Uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, seeing signs, wonders, and miracles happening, and, and you know, people being born again and, and saved for eternity. And uh, I think that is a great impact. And we've seen this in village after village, you know, in, in different tribes. And um, it's, it's wonderful to have the privilege to be part of this. I think sometimes churches in America and in Europe forget about these on-reach people places. Often the church spends money building a, a beautiful building, and then they send out missionaries, but a lot of the missionaries get sent to places that are largely reached. I, I mean, I was a grew up as a missionary in Mexico, and there were many missionaries there, but Mexico has very good churches. Yeah. But the church has forgotten about some of these areas. They're remote. They're hard to, to get to. Yeah. So what would you say to those churches who, who want to obey the Great Commission? They want to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But how can a church get involved in engaging with an on reach people group? Yeah. Uh, I would say there are, there are several, several ways of being involved and engaged in pioneer missions. You know, number one, uh, there are good, good sites, you know, Joshua Project, Finish the Task, where you can read about the, you know, the situation in the world. Um, you know, praying um, is one good thing. I would say the other thing that we would encourage them, you know, why don't they contact us at Mission 111, mission111.com if you're in the States, and you will find a lot of information, you know, how you can be involved in reaching the unengaged people groups. I would say mainly why people are not involved is not that they don't want to, it's because they don't know. I mean, uh, when I, I, I visited, I visit pastors, churches, you know, different, you know, networks and so on. And, I, and when we start to share about these things, most people think it's already done. They think that everyone has heard, you know, we're basically waiting for the imminent return of our Lord Jesus. And, and when we start to talk about, you know, there are unengaged groups, groups that have never heard uh, about Jesus before, ever. Um, they're surprised and, and the response from many are how can we help how can we be involved I mean this is not fair this is not right let us do something for these people so it's, it's a lack of knowledge mainly uh, not so much of a heart condition because when people get to know about this they say okay let's do something you know let's be involved somehow um, that's, that's a lot of the reactions that we get. Then, of course, they won't think, how do you do it? We, we don't know anything about it. We're sending missionaries and, you know, to places that are mostly reached, that where there's been mission work going on for a number of years. Um, so um, it has to be a, a, sh a shift of focus, and that, that might take some time. Uh, but, you know, l read, listen. You know, a good step is you, you're listening to this podcast, and now, now when you hear about it, you know, let's let's do something about it. And yeah, Joshua, you can mission111.com. Yeah, so so if you're listening and, and you're a young person who wants to go on an, an adventure for Jesus, mm. and you're not scared, you're ready to go anywhere that Jesus calls you. I really encourage you to to pray about going uh, on pioneer missions and and uh, connect with mission111.com and find out more about how you can go to these these places that are very hard to reach, but where you can have a, a, a tremendous impact leading people, entire people groups to Jesus. Yes, it's, um, it's a privilege. Uh, I would say that the change that we see in our students' lives, usually when they come, you know, we have, we've had people that have been, they're barely saved when they come to us. And we have those that have been saved for, you know, they've been believers since, as long as they can remember. When they go, and some have been to, to different Bible schools or colleges, prior, you know, prior to ours, others have no previous experience. So when they work together as a group for these eight weeks during the booth camp, we see a change in their lives. But when we really see the change in their lives is when they are out in the tribe. Afterwards, when they, when they come back, we hear this over and over again, again, and they say, I didn't know that God could use me in such a way. I didn't know that I would see miracles in front of my very eyes. I didn't know 
you know, how the situation, you know, among the unreached are. And I'm so happy that I made this step. It, it, it changed their lives, but oh boy, it really changed my life and my heart. So we see transformation in the hearts and in the lives of those going through Mission 111, as well as in the lives uh, in those uh, uh, that they have shared the gospel with. Uh, so um, it's a win-win situation. And um, the people that you meet will never be the same. And if you go through this, you will never be the same. It will change your life and it will change the lives of others for, for all of eternity. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Brother Michael, for being on the Evangelism Podcast. I so love your ministry, your passion for, for reaching the lost in very difficult places of the earth. Thank you for standing up for Jesus. Yeah, thank you so much, Daniel, for having me. Uh, it's a privilege to be here in this podcast, and, and we're impressed with the work you, that you're doing. Yeah, you have a great heart for people evangelizing year after year month after month, and, you know, keep on doing what you're doing. It's a great work that you're doing as an evangelist. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening today. I am excited about telling people about Jesus, and I want to invite you to be a part of helping us to rescue people from hell and take them with us to heaven. There's two things you can do to help. First of all, can you go find the Evangelism Podcast on Apple iTunes and leave us a positive review? By giving a review, you will help other people find these valuable resources about sharing our faith. And second, would you become a financial partner with King Ministries? Every single dollar that people give us enables us to lead at least one person to Jesus. And so that means for only one dollar, you can help start a party in heaven. And so today, I want to invite you to become a monthly partner. You can start out for just a dollar, but if God puts it on your heart to do more, of course you can do more. But please go to kingministries.com and become a monthly partner with us today to help us to lead Lead more people to Jesus. Thank you so much, and God bless you. For more information about how to share your faith or to financially support our worldwide evangelistic outreaches, visit kingministries.com. Again, that's kingministries.com.